This video is about autophagy and cancer. And autophagy is the breaking down of all proteins and reusing it. And when we starve, our body looks around for all protein that's not perfect, takes it apart, what it could use, it uses what it can't, we pass it as waste. And cancer is one of those things that it takes apart. So I'm going to put on the tape. It's well worth it's well well worth listening to the whole tape. It's only six minutes long. It's like sticky proteins that clog things up as well as uh, clocking in the brain. Uh, so it cleans up all this damaged protein in the cells. That's what autophagy is. But the most important function of autophagy is anti-cancer. So let me explain this. Now, the difference between a normal cell and a cancer cell has to do with this one thing. And that has to do with this. In a normal cell, you have respiration in the mitochondria. What does that mean? Well, fuel is converted through a machine to make energy currency of the body. It's called ATP. So you have fuel, like glucose, that uses oxygen to then be burned. That's the energy currency of the body. So in a normal cell, you have something called mitochondrial respiration. The mitochondria is the energy factory, and respiration has to do with breathing or oxygen, okay? So a normal cell needs oxygen to generate fuel. Now, in a cancer cell, there's damage to this respiratory mechanism. So this motor with a carburetor that uses oxygen is broken, okay? There's irreversible damage. So what happens when you damage that system as a survival mechanism, this cell starts to activate an ancient pathway that is able to ferment glucose, which basically is a way of breaking it down differently without the use of oxygen. Now, whether there's oxygen or not, that has nothing to do with it. Glucose fermentation doesn't necessarily need oxygen to make its energy. So that is the difference between a cancer cell and a normal cell. Normal cells use oxygen in the respiratory center. This is a fancy name for it right here. And cancer cells basically ferment glucose without oxygen. One of the ways that they test for cancer is through a PET scan. At a PET scan, they are measuring extreme glucose consumption. Cancer cells are extremely hungry for glucose. They hog glucose more than normal cells. And sometimes they will starve the normal cells. Now, just by knowing that simple fact right there, why would anyone want to consume a lot of glucose or sugar if they have cancer? Now, the other question to ask is, why is there damage in this part of the mitochondria? Well, my theory is that it has something to do with the DNA that gets damaged. Because what's unique about the mitochondria is that the mitochondria has its own DNA. It's called mitochondria DNA versus the DNA in the nucleus of the cell, which is highly protective. The DNA and the mitochondria are much more prone to mutation or alteration because they're not as protected. Now, the mitochondria can use the DNA from the nucleus of the cell, but it also has its own DNA. And I think that's really why it becomes damaged, because it's simply not protected. You cannot get cancer in your body unless there's damage to this respiratory part of the mitochondria. What does all this mean? It means that autophagy 
has the ability to clean up this damage in your mitochondria because these are protein machines. These are enzymes. The protein damage in the mitochondria that causes the cells to shift can be cleaned up by autophagy. So that makes this benefit, anti-cancer, the most important benefit of autophagy. Now, there are two videos you need to watch now. You need to know all the things that can stimulate autophagy. One being intermittent fasting. But there's another video that I will put on the screen and also down below that is on cancer in my interview. So when the prolonged five-day fast is also autophagy stimulating. And on the third day, we're fully, we're fully into it. Well, I'm doing it for neuropathy, but I'm also getting the benefit of cleaning up cancer cells.